Hello and welcome to my Retro Tech Lab where we check out old video gear from yesteryear. Today we are having a full-blown Viewcamapalooza. Yep kids, we are talking sharp view cams, so grab your lab coats and let's get started. We're taking a trip back to the early 90s through the mid 2000s to explore a true icon of video recording history, the Sharp View Cam. And why do I have nine view cams? I honestly have no idea, but I thought it would be fun to share my view cam collection with you today. Now, later in the show, I will be field testing a few of these view cams and upscaling the video with my new RetroTINK 4K. But first, let's take a quick dive into the history of Sharp's view cam. Introduced to the Japanese market in 1992, the Sharp ViewCam model VLHL1 revolutionized the world of camcorders. Unlike traditional camcorders that required that's it, that's users it. to squint oh, into a so tiny right. viewfinder, the ViewCam provided a much larger, more user-friendly experience. Its four-inch color LCD screen made framing shots and reviewing footage significantly easier. In late 1993, the ViewCam finally arrived in the States just in time for the holidays, and it quickly became a sales sensation. Coming up, we'll check out our ViewCam video test samples in just a moment. As I mentioned before, I have nine view cams, and since they mostly offer the same functionality, I won't go into detail about each one. Instead, I will focus on a few models that I think you will find to be quite interesting. First up, I have one of the original Sharp View cams to hit the US market in late 1993. It's the Sharp VL E. 30U. This 8mm format view cam was priced at approximately 1,000 US dollars. Its innovative form factor quickly became popular due to its user-friendly design. It featured a 3-inch LCD screen and a quarter-inch CCD image sensor with 270,000 pixels. A hallmark of these view cams was the swivel camera form factor and the menu-based functionality accessed through the LCD display. This E30's camera works, but its VCR is a tape eater. But don't worry, kids, we will still be able to check out this Sharp VL E30U's image quality in just a moment. This just into our newsroom, the team at Dave's Retro Video Lab, the wildly popular YouTube channel, has suffered a major loss just moments ago. Dave and the crew had just finished recording a segment for an upcoming episode when his beloved Sharp VLE30U blew a capacitor and the view cam lost total functionality. Every effort was made to revive the E30U, but was ultimately unsuccessful. An eyewitness on the scene just spoke moments ago. Let's listen in. Yeah, it was really gnarly. We will have more information as this story develops, so stay tuned. Now back to our regularly scheduled programming. Next up, we have a Hi8 View Cam model VLH410U, which went on sale here in the States in 1994, and it retailed for about 2,500 US dollars. The H410 boasted significant improvements, including a four inch LCD screen and a quarter inch CCD image sensor with a resolution of approximately 470,000 pixels. Additionally, the H410U was the first view cam to feature a view cam port docking station allowing for easy connectivity to a TV. Sharp also offered an optional accessory for the VLH410 called the ViewCam Teleport. Priced at 900 US dollars, this device allowed users to send and receive still images over a phone line. Transmitting images could take anywhere from 8 
to 20 seconds. Using the teleport required another VLH410U and an additional teleport unit on the receiving end, bringing the total cost for all the necessary hardware close to seven thousand US dollars. My Sharp VL H410U is missing a crucial AV power cable which is needed to remotely connect the H410 to its power supply or view cam port. As a result, I must place the H410 with its view cam port on a tripod whenever I use the camcorder. My H410 is still fully functional, so I will add this view cam to our test group. Hey, don't click away. Caitlin and our crew will be back with our ViewCam video test results. As expected, Sharp's ViewCam product line evolved to become more compact over time. Here we have one of the final models with the iconic swivel camera form factor, the Sharp VL. NZ100 was introduced in 2002 and priced at 700 US dollars. This little powerhouse recorded onto mini DV tapes featured firewire connectivity and could also capture still images onto an SD card. It boasts a quarter inch CCD image sensor with 460,000 pixels, making it a standout in its class. Next up, we have the Hulk of view cams from 1996, the Sharp VL. D5000U, a three CCD mini DV view cam. This massive view cam requires bare paw size hands to grip this thing thanks to its three CCD image sensors with around 410,000 pixels each. It also features a five inch LCD monitor, time code, a high speed shutter, and a 12 to one optical zoom lens with digital image stabilization. It also included a view cam port docking station similar to the VLH410U. Sharp's D5000 view cam retailed for about 5,000 US dollars, which is quite a hefty price for this hefty camcorder. What I really like about this view cam is its professional features. The iris and exposure controls are easily accessed by using the select dial and set button, which I wish most view cams offered that kind of functionality. Now I have two issues with my D5000. Just like my H410 view cam, the D5000 is missing its special power cable, which connects it to its its power supply. As a result, I must operate my D5000 while it's plugged into its view cam port base, which is really annoying. Additionally, while the camera on my D5000 works, the tape transport is all messed up, preventing me from recording video. But don't worry, my retro tech friends, where there's a will, there's a way. I will still be able to test out this view cam, so stay tuned. Finally, we have my favorite view cam from my collection, the Sharp VL SD20U Mini DV view cam from 1999, which retailed for about 800 US dollars. Why is it my favorite view cam? Well, it combines the best features from the entire view cam line into one compact view cam. It's relatively small, includes a control switch feature for easy menu navigation, plus the SD20 offers both Firewire and S-Video connectivity. Under the hood, the SD20 has an impressive one third inch CCD image sensor with 610,000 pixels and a bright three inch LCD display. We will definitely add this camera to our test group. As I mentioned earlier, we're now going to take our ViewCam test samples out to our secret test range to see how they perform. Let's dive in and take a look. So of course, 
on the morning of our view cam test. It's pouring rain outside and to add some added extra drama, let's throw in some thunder. So the crew and I had to abandon our top secret test range Delta and move on over to my country estate codenamed Echo. We brought our retro tech assistant Caitlin along to help us out. Okay, first up we have the Sharp VLE650U 8mm view cam from 1998. I chose this model because it represents the typical view cam of its time, featuring mostly automatic settings. The image quality of the 650 is decent, but I couldn't resist doing some slight color correction in Adobe Premiere. Overall, the E650's image quality holds up quite well. Next, we have the Sharp VLH410U. Surprisingly, the S video terminal on the ViewCam port was dead, so we had to use the composite output. It's not ideal, but it got the job done. The 410's video quality is quite impressive, especially for a camcorder from 1994. I did some minor color correction, but the video already looked great. Here we have my favorite view cam of the group, the SD20U from 1999. I like this view cam because of its feature set and its 610,000 pixel CCD. However, I wasn't completely satisfied with the overall color accuracy of the SD20, even though we set the white balance correctly before recording these clips. We had a few extra minutes, so we brought the SD20 over to the lab for a test, and the image was much improved, though the red tone in the brick might be hiding the initial color accuracy problem. Finally, we have our last test specimen, the Sharp D5000 from 1996. I had high hopes for our D5000 until we discovered it doesn't have firewire. That's right, no firewire. And it shares the view cam port with the 410, so no S video out either. Not a good start for our D5000. Looking at the D5000 sample clips, they look okay, but there's too much red, especially against the grayish blue wall in the background, so maybe we can get a better white balance next time. The detail looks pretty good though, but I wish we had more time to bring this camera over to the lab for more testing. Okay, my retro tech friends, you're probably wondering how am I getting the footage from my view cams into my computer? And it's fairly straightforward for a Dave's Retro Video Lab thing. Uh, the approach is very Rube Goldberg, I promise you. It's very typical of how I do things. But quite simply, I take the video output from these camcorders, I run it through an analog to digital converter, and then the footage gets recorded with this Panasonic P2 field recorder, uh, and the output of the field recorder goes into this Black Magic video recorder, which has a waveform monitor, which is super helpful when determining if the output of my cameras are properly exposed, so I get good image quality. I didn't record anything with the Black Magic, but what you can do is you can hit video. So in broad daylight, I can see the output of the cameras nice and clearly. And then I can switch over to waveform to determine if uh, the image is properly exposed. From there, I will take the output of the P2 recorder, uh, pipe that right into my RetroTINK 4K, and then that goes right into my computer. As usual, Dave's plan didn't go as expected. The Blackmagic Shuttle I.O. box he uses for capturing video didn't have a setting for capturing 1080p60. Consequently, the shuttle wouldn't capture the video. To work around this, Dave played the footage from the P2 field recorder through the Sony analog to digital converter, then passed it through the RetroTank 4K and into the Blackmagic Video Assist recorder. The clips were recorded in ProRes and then transferred to Dave's computer. Uh, this is about as streamlined as it gets, but this is what I used out in the field. And everything uh, is hooked up to a large power tank battery uh, that powered most of this stuff. And that's a quick explanation of my process. 
The legacy of the Sharp View Cam is evident in today's technology. Its influence can be seen in the way we use cameras on our phones, the flip out screens on modern camcorders, and even in the concept of vlogging. Whether you're a collector or just curious about the gadgets that pave the way for today's technology, the Sharp View Cam is a captivating chapter in the evolution of video recording. Thank you for joining us here in the lab. Until next time, take care, and we look forward to seeing you soon. And let's get started. Woo!